Awakened and Aligned podcast. My name is Shannon Kaiser. I am your host and I am the author of Return to You, Find Your Happy Daily Mantras, Adventures for Your Soul, and The Self-Love Experiment, and other books. More coming soon. All of my work is really about you and aligning you to your most authentic self. And so I come at it from a place of spirituality, psychology, and health through the lens of wellness and mental health, because these are so important in our physical, spiritual, emotional, and mental well-being. So today's topic is really important, and I want to dive into it because I'm seeing it in both my coaching practice, but also something I've been experiencing lately, and that is the idea and the notion of anger and how anger and rage, if you will, can actually be a very important emotion for us to feel. It's something we should and could explore more. I find there's kind of different buckets. When we think of anger, a lot of times there's this layer of one side of it festering and being so angry and having that anger be part of your identity and, and you walk around angry and you show the world you're mad. And there's this, this is definitely a, an archetype, if you will, or a character. And some people really fester and thrive in that energy. And they use that anger to kind of just oh, live their life. And then there's the opposite side, which is where we're starting from today, which is often the people pleaser side, which is we were taught at a very young age to not be angry. Don't show that emotion. Don't rage. You know, don't, don't cry. Like all of that is unsafe. It's unmanageable. You can't control anger. And so we're going to put you in a box. Do not feel it. And so many of us, many empaths, highly sensitive people, people with very big hearts, people who feel the emotions of others, we don't understand anger. And so we run from it. I was taught at a very young age that it's not an appropriate thing to feel. And so I stifled it away and it turned into uh, quite a few decades of really abusing myself uh, through eating disorders, through drug addiction, through picking unconsciously, really, really toxic connections, really abusive relationships that I didn't even know was abuse because I thought that that is really just how life was until I started to do the inner work, started to do this teaching, started to really understand that, no, we actually deserve better. We deserve more. And sometimes not feeling our emotions, especially anger, sadness, the rage, all these heavier emotions, they can really internalize within us where they create really unhealthy patterns. And for me, it turned into in part with lots of other lifestyle factors, a diagnosis of, of fibromyalgia, which is a chronic muscle pain condition. And so by me not feeling the feelings, I literally, my body, my spirit and my mind was like soul suffocating and dying and literally having chronic pain. So I started to change my life. And the reason I'm sharing this today is because I have been working with a lot of people in my coaching practice who have been coming to me and saying, I'm angry this year. I realized for so long, I spent so many years people pleasing others. I spent so many time living for others, trying to be the good girl, looking the best, being the part, and it has gotten me nowhere. And so this is where anger can become a catalyst to really help us step into boundaries and knowing what is important to us. And so when you think about anger, I'd like you to kind of consider what is my relationship with anger? Do I feel that I can express it in healthy ways? We're not talking today about anger, going out and raging, jealousy, revenge, none of that. What we're talking about is understanding your anger and why you're feeling it and how it's important to feel because it's actually part of the whole human experience. It's part of the human spectrum and it's kind of a neutral energy if you understand because every energy is neutral in the sense that when you allow yourself to process it in a healthy way, it moves through you. It's when we don't process it that it sits with us. So for example, I have this beautiful pink highlighter. Imagine that this is, this is anger, heavy, dense anger is a heaviness. And a lot of times it's one of the most avoidant feelings and emotions because we do not want to feel it because it's so intense and uncomfortable. We try to avoid things that are uncomfortable. It's human nature. So why would we go to that? But the work really is to understand that the uncomfortableness can free you. And so when you see this anger, it's heavy. So we'll do things, we'll eat or eat over it or do drugs over it or pick fights with others or do anything we can to not avoid it or feel it. We do what we can to avoid it or we allow it to just become our identity. And so what we want to do is find the balance between there because the other side, the top is love. 
love and anger are literally, if you understand, um, part of the same spectrum and energy. It's just anger is at a very high uh, or low vibration in the sense that it's very dense and love is at a very high vibration. So you can move up the scale when you allow yourself to feel the anger. And that's what I want to start with is, is this idea that um, anger can be a catalyst to more love. Anger can help you move forward in life. Jess King, she's a Peloton instructor and she leads a 30 minute anger ride. If you're into the mood series on Peloton, if you're into Peloton, um, not promoting, just sharing what I love because I absolutely love them. But as far as Peloton goes, Jess King talks about anger and she says, I like anger because honestly, when I feel it, it lets me know something that has come close to threatening my values. And the truth is whether it's internal or external, when we do allow ourselves to feel angry, it's because the mama bear or papa bear has been awoken. And there's a piece of us that says, no, that is not okay. And so getting to this point of anger, letting yourself be anger, angry, we've seen it collectively with movements happening across the planet. It's like enough is enough. And I will stand up for what I know is true and just. And so being angry can actually, and that comes from a place of love, so much love for yourself, for life, for humanity, that you let that love fuel you instead of letting the anger drive you and be motivated by hate and envy and greed. You let the love drive you. And that love is, I know that we can do better. I know that I deserve better. And I know that I want to live a life that feels more aligned and in integrity with my values. And so anger becomes this catalyst to true love in your life. And I recently really done a lot of inner work and come to realize that I wasn't allowing myself to feel angry. I started working with a therapist and, and as we were going through the different processes, it was like, gosh, I've put up with a lot of crap from people my whole life. I am so mad. And I was mad at all these people who were taking advantage of me and all the people who were, you know, it was this, this constant and this, this realization that I was surrounded by egotistical selfish people, some many actually narcissists and even sociopaths and con artists. And I had just allowed it because I was always looking for the good in people. And I would look past all of, all of these major red flags until I started to put up boundaries and my anger fueled me to say enough, no more. And it turned into blocking people, cutting people out of my life, literally like taking an energetic sword and saying, no more, stop taking advantage. And love and unconditional love is not unconditional. I will let you just treat me however you want. And so in this turning point in my own life, I started to realize my own self-worth from a deeper layer, and it had to arrive from a place of letting myself get angry. So for you, I want you to consider where you have not allowed yourself to really fool the, feel the energy there that wants to come through. Because the truth is, anger helps us nurture our inner child. It's as if my inner child said, finally, Shannon, you're standing up for us. I've been waiting. And yes, we deserve to be treated with respect and kindness. It has to start with you. And so this feeling that you've been avoiding, ask yourself, why am I, why am I afraid to feel the certain feeling. And sometimes it's not even anger that you're afraid to feel. It's what anger represents underneath. Sometimes anger is what we go to because underneath is really sadness. Sometimes underneath is actually grief. It's easier to feel angry maybe than to let ourselves really mourn the loss of the life we thought we'd have or the person who left us, the person who has passed all of the feelings that come underneath. Now, remember, we can return to a sense of peace by addressing these feelings with love. So I'm going to give you permission to do a little ritual to help you understand your anger in a healthy way. And one is to first allow yourself to say, how do I feel? Where do I feel angry? Where have I not allowed myself to feel anger? And where is it in my body? Maybe it's in your stomach. Maybe it's in your heart area and your heart chakra, or your stomach, solar plexus. Get curious about it. Get curious and drop in. You can close your eyes and just drop in and say, where is this in my body? What sensations do I have? And then you move into a phase of really starting to inquire and ask and address the anger. Ask yourself, why are you here? What are you trying to protect? What are you trying to show me? And almost always it's coming from a place of love because your values have been threatened. 
And so when you get angry, it's actually showing you where you've been in out of alignment or over giving or sacrificing certain aspects of you, or just feeling and seeing an injustice in the world. And so this is a giving you permission as well to get in touch with your inner child. And as you go through this process, you can actually thank the anger because all anger wants is an invitation to be recognized and understood, just wants to be addressed. As soon as you give it permission, you can let it move through you. And then you can actually reframe anger. Instead of looking at the anger as, as resisting it, I can't feel this, I don't want to be that angry person, let it fuel you and reframe how you're looking at it because instead it will often produce a fire inside. And this fire inside of you is what lights you up. And having this fire and fuel is what's going to move you forward into a place of healthier, having healthier boundaries, having a more conditioned outcome. So expressing your anger in an inspired manner is what this will lead you to. You can ask the anger, how do you want to be expressed? Now, if you're really into this process, the anger is not going to say, get revenge, go do some smear campaign. No, we don't operate in that place. The anger is going to say, you've always wanted to do a kickboxing class or go take martial arts, or the anger is going to say, start painting again, start expressing yourself through, through this, get your energy out through creativity. Maybe it says, sit down and write a song. You used to write songs, or it's time to write that book, put all of this energy and fuel and passion into that book. That's been waiting to be written. Most often we can process our anger through a creative outlet and it allows us to express our true self. And maybe it's a fitness outlet, or maybe you can join a a new community in the area. Anger wants to be felt in the body and processed. And when we do, we start to realize it is the greatest teacher for us. So I invite you to look at anger in a new way and give yourself permission to express it in a healthy way. Because as we do this, we start to realize how important we are in the world and our emotional kind of energy is also just as important. And what you're putting out into the world, you are getting back. And so you want to protect your peace Allow yourself to protect yourself by feeling the feelings that really want to be processed. So you can dive deeper on my blog, playwiththeworld.com, the link below. I also invite you, if you love to travel and you love to do wellness retreats and you're interested in going much deeper into exploring your emotions, such as uh, through ayahuasca retreats or doing plant medicine, I am inviting you personally to Costa Rica. Rhythmia is a life advancement center. In 2024, they have thought leader guest speaker series, and I am the guest speaker in Majesty Week, which is March 3rd through the 10th of 2024. And March 3rd through the 10th is Majesty Week. And if you decide to come to Rhythmia, you can use the code SEEKJOY750 and save $750 off of your entire retreat package. And that that offer is good for the week that I am there as the Majesty guest speaker. And I look forward to seeing you if that feels aligned, but that's a huge opportunity to get a savings and to connect forward. So you can always click in the link below and just keep showing up for yourself. That's really what it's all about. I'm sending you lots of love on your journey and thank you for being here. And I'd love to hear in the comments how you are going to express your anger in healthy, inspired ways. For me, I've recently started doing more boxing and I'm going to be working with a boxing instructor to do private lessons. And I started to um, up my fitness levels and really channel that energy into more of a aggressive fitness routine. And I'm also journaling every day and it's been awesome. So I can't wait to hear from you in the comments what you're going to be doing. Thanks again for playing with the world.